What's going on guys? UCF Jaguar back here with JinJag.com and we got a little bit of a game preview this video as this Sunday at 1 o'clock Eastern Time the Jacksonville Jaguars will be hosting the Tennessee Titans at home. It'll be the Jaguars first divisional game as the Jaguars are 2-0 going into this game while the Tennessee Titans will come in with a record of 1-1. One and one. And without further ado, let's go ahead and preview this game. Last name ever, first name greatest, like a sprained ankle boy, ain't nothing to play with. Started off low. Now this is a very important game for a few different reasons. First of all, whoever wins this game is first place in the AFC South. Obviously, like I said, the Jaguars are 2-0, but... If the Jaguars were to lose this game, they drop to 2-1, while the Tennessee Titans will move up to 2-1 as well. And they will essentially lose a tiebreaker to the Tennessee Titans because uh, they would be going into, if they win, all of a sudden they have a 2-0 record since they took care of the Texans last week. And, you know, if the Jaguars do lose this game, then the Jaguars drop to 0-1 in the division. So... That is not what the Jaguars want to do, man. This is a pivotal game. The Jaguars need to go out there and uh, win this game to take sole possession of first place. Because if they win, you know, they move up to 3-0. Tennessee Titans down to 1-2. You never know what the hell the Texans and uh, Colts are going to do. So, you know, this will be a huge game, man. The division, Divisional games are the clearest path to the playoffs. You know, you get... Six games against the teams in your division. Six out of 16 games. That's about you know 35 to 38 percent or something like that. So about one third of your games are against the division. And divisional games matter the most, man. It's it's what comes down in tiebreakers. Um, besides like the head-to-head -head thing, when it comes to other teams in the AFC, when it comes to uh, seeding and the playoffs. But yeah, Jaguars they got to take over this game. Now, when you look at the Tennessee Titans, you know, week one they went out and the Miami Dolphins in a very, very sloppy game, just because there were multiple weather delays. It was like the longest game in like NFL history, I believe. But uh, they did wind up losing, dropping that one to the Miami Dolphins. And then the following week they went out and played the Texans, and what was also a pretty sloppy game you know both those teams are 0-1 in that game but then you know Tennessee Titans came out victorious you know they had a, a fake punt and everything they locked Watson down and yeah I mean but going into this game now the Tennessee Titans are a pretty injured team you know right now Marcus Mariota is injured with like an elbow injury I mean this dude is always freaking injured um, their offensive line is pretty decimated right now, especially with their book and tackles. You know, you got uh, Jack Conklin. Um, he's out to an ACL tear that he that he um, had during the divisional playoff round against the Patriots. On the other side, you have Taylor Lewan, who is in the concussion protocol. He was out last week. Usually concussions, when they're in a concussion protocol, um, a lot of times they might come back and actually play the next week. Um, other times they might only miss one game, but... He hasn't been clear to play yet, and uh, they had their number three offensive tackle who was out due to um, a sickness. He actually was hospitalized due to it, but yeah, um, they're pretty injured like on that front. Now, the Titans, man, when you look at them, when you look at their quarterbacks, man, the Jaguars had six losses in 2017. Half of those losses came to Blaine Gabbert and Marcus Mariota, sadly enough. I mean, Jaguar fans do not like Blaine Gabbert as... You know, due to the Jaguars drafting him, he was a bust. He was a complete nightmare. He just wasn't. It's kind of an asshole while he was here. Jaguar fans just don't like him. And, uh, you know, whoever gets to start, man, uh, we will be familiar with them just because we did play against them last year. So we have some tape on them. Now, you know, they're a team that moved on from Mike Mularkey last year, even though we did take him to the playoffs. You know, he was out there running like this exotic smash mouth kind of offense that really wasn't exotic at all. Uh, but, you know, they're out here. Uh, you know, kind of revamping their offense a little bit. They brought in Mike Vrabel, um, the former defensive coordinator for the Houston Texans. You know, he's out there as the head coach of them now. And, you know, their team, they got some pretty good talent. You know, they got a good offensive line, win healthy. Uh, you know, you look at their running backs. They have uh, guys like Derrick Henry. They have guys like Deion Lewis. Pretty good two-headed duo. You also look, um, their wide receiver core, not super, super talented. You know, Corey Davis, top five pick last year. He hasn't really lived up to that spot yet. You know, he can still do it. You know, he's only a second year, but he just hasn't uh, fully blossomed into that, uh, what they expected him to be. 
Um, but yeah, then you look on the defensive side, you know, they have a Dory Jackson, uh, first round pick last year. Uh, they also have, you know, guys that they draft in the draft or shot Evans. Um, you know, they have honor Harold honor Landry as, uh, Vince Young would like to say, you know, Jarrell Casey, they have a very, very good secondary, you know, Malcolm Butler, um, you know, like I just said, Adoree Jackson, Kevin Byer back at the safety. They're pretty good in that front. So this is a very, very talented team. You know, before the season started, I kind of had this team at an 11-5 and record uh, just because I really like their talent. Just It's all about coaching. You know, can they coach right? It's also a lot about Marcus Mariota. You know, I, you know, before the season and everything, I was pretty high on Marcus Mariota. I liked him as a quarterback, but, you know, this guy has proven to be soft, very, very injury, you know, prone, and... He's just, he doesn't have a killer instinct, you know, he's not, he's, he's got beautiful mechanics and everything, he looks like a quarterback, you know, got quarterback size and everything, but, you know, he's just, he, he doesn't seem aggressive, you know, he just seems super, super, like, passive, um, just soft, man, he just doesn't seem gritty, but, you know, that's just with him. Now, you know, when I look to uh, play this team, you know, some things that I would like to see, man, I would like to see us maybe pass more on first down, you know, we did great passing against the uh, Patriots on first down, you know, Blake Bortles, when he come out there and throw immediately, you know, he just, he just does better and it gets a better flow along the game, but, you know, one thing I do feel like is that, you know, with the tech or Titans having a pretty good secondary, I could see us going back to a game plan like we had against the Giants where, you know, we line up in an I formation and, you know, we just kind of pound it with Leonard Fournette, you know, like I uh, feel our offensive line is better than their, their D line and, you know, their strength of their defense is, uh, you know, their back four or back five, I should say, you know, with their secondary. So I don't know if they're going to want uh, Bortles to be thrown against that too, too much, kind of like with the Patriots, you know, they, I, I feel like they probably saw mismatches, they probably saw that they could probably take advantage of um, you know their defense and they did that now you know what I would like to see is just take what the defense is giving you you know like go out there if they're gonna have seven eight guys in a box and you see that there's man covered go on you know do some more cross crossing routes you know throw a fade you know challenge them one-on-one -on -one. Uh, we saw a very good Blake Bortles last game probably his best game of his career and you know this is kind of what we're at least the coaching staff is probably expecting out of Blake Bortles you know when they signed him to a new contract they weren't saying okay you know play like 20 you did 2017 and 2018 no they want, want him to get better he looks more comfortable he looks a lot better his pocket presence is great you know he, he has a really good feel for it man he was extremely accurate man take what the defense is giving you uh keep running like a balanced attack and you know we'll see if Fournette is back this game I'm not too sure if he will or not be but he was practicing so he will most likely uh, be back this game, but that's kind of what I want to see along the offense, man. Just uh, take what the defense is giving you. You know, I'd like to see some more passing, like on first down, and just keep playing unpredictable. You know, I'd like to see us run out of like uh, shotgun a little more. Test Leonard Fournette out in the you know shotgun, doing some zone run plays, just because you know when we are back in shotgun, while you know history shows that Leonard Fournette is not as good, you know, in that you know shotgun kind of set. It seems like a whole everyone else in our offense is better, and it's letting a lot more guys emerge. You know, I'd rather you know see good games out of D.D. Westbrook, Keelan Cole, Safarian Jenkins, our quarterback Blake Bortles, and just having uh, you know Leonard Fournette out there. And when we're in shotgun more, you know, we can get the two running back sets, and you know, we get Corey Grant involved. Corey Grant, man, love to see more of this guy. This guy makes people miss. Great in open field. He he freaking breaks tackles for God's sake. I mean, he's so little, but he's able to do that. Huge X factor. I want to kind of see more out of him. When it comes to the defense, you know, I think the main thing we need to do this game is really watch out for Deion Lewis, you know. They're going to probably be dumping the ball off to him. I like what I've seen out of our run defense this season. You know, Avery Jones, Malik Jackson, our interior, uh, Marcel Doris, they're all doing great. You know, we are clogging up the run lanes when they try to run up the middle. The only thing they really get is little, like, stretch plays or, like, pitches when they try to, when they actually have, like, decent runs. So, uh, you know, you saw last game they were dumping the ball a lot, off a lot to guys like, you know, Kevin White and Sonny Michelle. You know, Deion Lewis is probably better than both of those guys. He's actually a former Patriot, ironically enough. So, you know, I feel like he's probably the big X factor of that offense just because their wide receivers don't really scare me. You know what I mean? I feel like we can cover um, their guys. And, you know, Corey Davis, Sean Matthews, he's a pretty decent player, but, you know, he's no number one. And, you know, they, they just don't have, um, you know, wide receivers to scare you. They don't really have a much of a quarterback to really scare you, especially, man, if they're, both of their offensive tackles are out. 
I think the Jaguars could be in to really like whoop this team's ass. I mean, I'll be completely honest with you. You know, I know a lot of us look back to last year and say, oh, the Titans swept us, you know, blah, 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 whatever. They beat us, you know, they had our number last year, but it's not like, you know, people act like we don't know how to beat the Texans or the Titans, you know, like it was Tom Brady. You know, we had never beaten Tom Brady until last week, but the Titans, let's not forget, they came into Jacksonville in 2016, and all they had to do was beat a 2-12 Jacksonville Jaguars team to make the playoffs. The Jaguars went in there, and they whooped their ass. You know, they knocked them out of the playoffs, and, you know, that was just two seasons ago. You know, last year, we got swept, whatever. You know, the they were probably better than us uh, the second game of the year. You know, we were still figuring out ourselves. We were going to this win-lose, win-lose shit, you know, going to 3-3 three and three before we went off on a big, you know, winning streak. And at the beginning of the year, the Titans were pretty good. We met up with them in week 17. We had already clinched a playoff spot. We had nothing to play for, while the Titans had everything to play for. You know, they had the playoffs on the line. They were at home, really bad conditions. I mean, you know, I, I'm looking to get a clean slate. I'm looking to come in here and whoop some Titan ass, which I think we will do. You know, I, I think Bortles will have a good game. Learn Fournette will be back. I just think that uh, we're matched up so much better than him. We got better coaching or you know, when you look at the roster, man, like, what position are they better at? You know, they're probably better at offensive tackle when their guys are healthy. But other than that, can't really think of anything. You know, we, we match up. We're better than them at every single position unit. So, uh, you know, including quarterback. You know, I'll take Blake Bortles over soft-ass Mariota or, you know, Blaine Gabbert. So, yeah, I mean, I honestly, with this game, I think the Jaguars are going to win by double digits again. You know, I think it's going; they're going to be able to run it. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, I think the Jaguars will definitely, like, win this game. That's my analysis on it. Titans fans, go ahead and hate in the comment section because I know y'all are coming. But I'm confident about this one. And if we lose, I will eat crow. Don't worry about it. Uh, but, yeah. But it's my recap, man. I'll, I'll be at this Titans game, so be sure to holler at your boy. Um, if I see you, uh, I don't know where I'll be sitting yet. I'll probably just be uh, buying tickets day of or day before. Or if any of you guys are selling extra tickets, man, let me know. I'll be, uh, you know, if you got two for sale, I'll be coming up with my brother. Just holler at your boy, you know. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of my recap of this game. Uh, hopefully, the Jaguars will move on to three and zero, go to one and zero in the division, and you know, if the Jaguars can win this game, and the Colts were to lose, we would have. Uh, two, we will be two games up on every team in the AFC South with only three games, you know, in the schedule. I mean, that's that'd be insane, you know. That'd be a huge jump for only week for only three games in. So, let's take advantage of this game, first division game. Got to win these. Um, you know, they really matter down the road. And uh, yeah, it's my recap. Thank you guys all for watching. UCF Jaguar, Witchinjag.com, and I'm out.